everyone, Brad DeRoche here. Welcome back. It's day seven in our short series on guitar fundamentals. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about fingernails and a bit on fingernail care. So to start with, what I would like to discuss are the different nail shapes that people use and how they affect the sound on the instrument. All right, so let's dig in. First off, most people, when they think of shaping the nails, and, I, and this is how I used to look at it too, I thought I would shape the nail to the tip of my finger. So it's basically a rounded shape. And uh, forgive my uh, kind of uh, <laughs> low brow prosthetics here, but we're going to say that this is a fingernail, all right? So it's like shaped like so. All right, so <laughs> how about this? Finger and fingernail. So this is basically a rounded nail shape, and it would. Uh, it makes sense to me somehow that this would be an effective nail shape. All right. Uh, and so what we need to think about is how does the fingernail affect the sound of the instrument? And what we're really trying to do, most people would agree, is that we're trying to produce a strong fundamental sound, a nice warm sound on the instrument. So something kind of like this. do that to produce that kind of sound the string has to be moved a certain way and what works best is to push the string inward toward the instrument so uh, if I did that straight inward would be something pretty much like this uh, a strong or extreme rest stroke let's say it produces a very powerful fundamental people like the sound that's generally why we try to play like that is because it sounds good to our ear now, if we get the geometry right, the fulcrums and the levers and, and all of that that we talked about in previous lessons, nails uh, will just basically enhance what we're doing. So if the fingernail or finger is in the right position here with the knuckle and all that stuff like we talked about, what will happen is that the fingernail will push the string inward toward the guitar. Now, let's kind of use my props here, my nail buffer that will become my string and fingernail. So here's the string. And you can see, as I move through the string, how far down the string gets pushed toward the body of the guitar as I go through, as my finger nail pushes through. So if we watch this end down here, we can see it dip down a little bit as I push through the string. So I grab a hold of the string, push down, and it's released. Now, what if I wanted to push that string further down? I could do this. I could use this nail shape. Now, this is what I use now. Um, it's actually a beveled nail shape. And I don't know if you can see my fingernails, but they're essentially the same shape as this. So they're beveled downward. So they're longer on the pinky side, shorter on the thumb side. This beveled shape, what, what this does is it actually pushes the string further down. So again, watch this end. You can see how much further down it gets depressed. So if I started here, right at the where the nail starts to move away from the skin, it will then be pushed downward quite a long ways before it's released. So look at how far down that goes before it goes across. All the way down to there, and then it's released. All right, so, so this really pushes the string down a long way, and it gives us a very strong fundamental versus this straight rounded shape, which does not push the string down nearly as far. All right, so once again, there's that one, and then there is this one. So think of, again, how far down that pushes the string. So what I use is this beveled shape to push the string further in, and then I do one more thing to produce an even stronger fundamental note, is I actually tilt my right hand slightly. Now this is, there. there's some problems in doing this, and so it, it's not 100% effective way to use the right hand for all situations, but I found that it produces a really beautiful dark sound, which I like. So anyway, instead of having my hand perfectly parallel to the top, I actually tilt my wrist slightly this way. This is a bit of an exaggeration, just so you can get the point. But what it does then is it pushes the nail further downward, so I have an even more extreme angle to pushing the string inward. Now, what you really have to do when you're shaping your nails is you have to take care of 
not only the the plane that the the string rides along but you have to really shape carefully shape this corner here so that's this corner of the fingernail and so when I'm going through and shaping I have to make sure that I've not only made sure this is really smooth on this contact point corner the ramp going down is very smooth but also the final uh, curve here the bottom of the nail if you would the bottom of the bevel has to be really carefully shaped if it's too pointy it's the sound will be really bright and brittle and it won't sound good if it's too rounded it will basically become this nail shape and it's not as effective it gives a, a it has some other problems with it okay so hopefully that gives you some sense of nail shape and how to do it so it might take a while to grow them if you've never done it like this before but to bevel them that way um, now how far out do they have to stick over the tip of the finger not very far at all um, I'm gonna see if I can get closer to the camera you can maybe see this but excluding the little finger which I use I have to use for Rosgiato but there's not a lot of nail sticking out over the tip of the finger uh, it's kind of hard to see with the glare here but um, that might help some all right see there's not a, a tremendous amount of, of uh, maybe maybe a little over I don't know a millimeter two millimeters at most so it's not a it's not a, a really long nail that's not the point what works better is to have just a tiny tilt like this and a slightly longer nail on this side and it really pushes the string down so that's what we want to accomplish with our nail shape now how do I take care of them how do I shape them on a daily basis I have basically three tools one I use a nail file I like these glass nail files um, they just cut really well they're very smooth but you have to get a high quality one uh, I would look for a company called Mont Blanc you can get them online on Amazon or whatever um, there are different qualities in glass nail files and the ones from not the company called Mont Blanc were really good and that's what I've used for many years um, so I start with that and I shape the nail to make sure that there are no little nicks or scrapes in it um, I don't use it every day but maybe that the nail file maybe every few days just mostly when my nails get too long what I use multiple times a day though is this 500 crit, grit open coat sandpaper so I'm going to show you this up close it's 500 grit you can see that here but more important than just 500 grit is that it is open coat 500 grit open coat sandpaper this stuff um, it's not so easy to find I would look in an auto body shop locally if you if, if you can't find it or strings by mail has it it's I don't know it's like 50 cents a sheet or something like that um, anyway when you use this uh, the more you use it the the grit uh, on there falls off and so it wears off and so it actually gets the darker spots are where it's worn off and so it gets smoother or finer in those spots so as you go through and you, you want a finer spot you can use that but if you want to really cut in and, and do some more uh, deeper filing let's say you could use one of the newer spots there and then uh, when those spots around the corners start to wear out and they don't have something to get underneath the nail you just fold it and then you can get it underneath the nail that way all right so this stuff is amazing it works great so this will give you a really nice smooth uh, edge on the nail and then to finish it off I use a nail buffer um, this is actually a nail buffer made by a company called Microsurface. they make the material that's called micro mesh so this is a micro mesh nail buffer this is 12,000 grit uh, made out of some material that's cushioned uh, it w it's for polishing and so this will make the nails polished like glass so I use this as the final step so it's usually on most days it's just this and this uh, nail file if I need to shape the nail somehow or to bring the length down a little so these things I use all the time like a, a number of times every day just to make sure the nails don't get little scrapes and clicks in them all right so there's the the shaping and then lastly when it comes to nail care um, most products that are on the market really don't have um, any kind of therapeutic effect for the nail so they really don't help our nails to become healthier like biotin and different vitamins and different oils and stuff we put on them it doesn't really do anything because the nail plate the material on the top is basically like our hair it's it's a dead material <laughs> it's no longer growing uh, what's growing is underneath uh, back here at the cuticle it's called a matrix those cells are new cells being formed but the stuff on the top is it's already dead 
And so if you, if you have problems with nails uh, in terms of um, uh, them chipping or flaking or, or something like that, that I would look into diet and that sort of thing because it, it's kind of more related to that than it is to any product you can put on them. Maybe avoid a lot of soaps and hand sanitizers. Those do dry it out. Anyway, one thing that you can do that's really simple, if you want to hydrate your nails, which is a must-do in, in uh, dry climates. Um, I live in Michigan, and in the wintertime, it gets really dry here because uh, our furnaces are on and so forth. And so I use this uh, it's very simple lip balm. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter what kind. This is made out of natural ingredients. It probably just could be uh, whatever bliss stick or vaseline or whatever you want but i just put a little bit of this on my finger and then put that on the fingernails all right so that little coating what that does is it just keeps moisture in the nail it's not really going to seep in very far and do anything much to it but it'll keep them from drying out so you could use something like that on a regular basis or just any kind of moisturizing creams will work also and that just gets a little ways into the nail but it basically traps the moisture in the nail and that helps to keep them from drying out so that's one thing I would do. Um, avoid the vitamins and biotin and all that stuff and all the, the fancy oils that, that claim that they'll make your nails stronger and all that. Uh, I did a lot of research on it and a bunch of experimentation and have a bunch of anecdotal evidence from other people and I can tell you that most of that stuff doesn't really work. Uh, better to just keep them healthy by keeping them nicely buffed and filed and then hydrate them and those things will help you the most. All right, hope this helps you this video. Um, there's so much we could talk about when it comes to nail shape and all that. Everybody's got a little different preference when it comes to that, but I would experiment once again with this beveled nail shape. I think you will find that it uh, is to your liking if, if the sound um, works pretty well, but don't let them get too long. You're, then they tend to break and cause more problems with sound and other stuff. So anyway, hope this helps you and I'll see you again tomorrow and we'll talk about some more exciting things. All right, see you soon.